All right. How many believe that tonight? Are you yearning for revival? I am too. This weekend, this weekend we have the opportunity to learn to bask in the presence of the Holy Spirit. I want to read some scripture to you. Acts 2, verse 17 says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my Spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will turn, be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great glorious day of the Lord. And this is the rest part. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I hope that you are ready for this weekend. Ready for, for good fellowship that's gonna be great. But I wanna challenge you to open up your hearts to open up your minds to the transforming power of the Holy Spirit that will change your life forever. As you've entered this room, you've come in, I don't know what, what walk of life you're going through right now. Some are on this mountaintop experience and some might be just, you might be having those dark days. But God has brought all of us here for a reason this weekend. And our prayer is that you will leave changed. Not changed by um, other people, but changed because God has done something special in your heart. Would you pray with me as we open up our weekend? Lord, we're already in awe of your presence in this room. Father, we, tonight we acknowledge how great you are. How awesome you are. And Father, our prayer this weekend is that your Holy Spirit would just be present among us. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Father, we pray over Michael as he speaks truth. You've given him a message and we, we, we just uh, ask that you just anoint him tonight. Father, we're thankful for our worship band, Osby, that, that uh, you would just use him and his band to lead us to the throne room. Father, we just pray that every word that we say, every action that we do, be glorifying to you. Amen. Please welcome my friend Eric Himes. Yo, yo, yo. Regeneration, we made it. We did it. Hello, hello. So uh, I have a few announcements I want to get through quickly because I just feel like let's get to it. Let's get to the meat. So if you haven't registered, please immediately following this meeting, go downstairs to Cyprus. Get your booklet, get your key if you need a key, get what, get what you need. Please uh, register if you haven't. If you didn't get a t-shirt because you were late or whatever, uh, they're gonna be back tomorrow and we'll have the t-shirts for you then. So if you haven't grabbed one, we'll have them for you. Don't worry, we'll get you your shirt. Tonight we are having a stoplight party. Moving on. <laughs> um, we're just really blessed to have uh, Michael Collins back, who was here in 2010 when we were in St. Louis. And if you were in the room, raise your hand if you were in the room in St. Louis, 2010. Yeah. Uh, we're, the theme is revival, and we saw something in that experience in that room that I think solidified in a lot of us um, the visions and dreams we needed to be revealed and I was transformed, and I know many of you were too. And when we started thinking about this theme of revival, it became very easy to think about 2010, a decade later. Where are we now? 
Also, Carol Voicey is here to speak. She's a great speaker, great woman of faith, and her heartbeat is revival. And we're going to hear her tomorrow morning and throughout the weekend as well. And I'll just be in the band here, uh, just hearing them sound check and warm up. It's just like, ah, this is so amazing. It's great to, it's great to have them. And Connect Up, our friends from Connect Up, the prayer team, prayer ministry that we had last year. Raise your hand if you've ever been in a Connect Up prayer time. You know that's worth your time. Um, we're going to hear about that in a little bit. But it's so awesome to have them with us again. Um, you'll see some people walking around this weekend with a button that says, ask me how I said yes to officership. Um, DYS's officers, cadets are wearing these buttons. We want to... We want you to engage in these conversations. We want not to be, we want it to be un, not threatening. I'm contradicting, double negatives. We do not want it to be threatening. It should not be threatening. Have a conversation with people with this button is what I'm trying to say. If you're called, if you're not called, it's a great opportunity to just talk to people who are leading us as officers. I want to share something. This fox that we see everywhere on your shirts and everything. I wanted to share where this kind of all came from, and it's a little weird to begin with, I'll just be honest. Um, but I'm just gonna read this, and I want you to uh, read along with me. This actually happened, this is something that the Spirit did in my life, and I just wanna, I feel like I wanna honor this, the Spirit and sharing this with you tonight. So on May 4th, 2018, I had a dream that I was in a large Salvation Army meeting. It was commissioning and I was told that a wild fox had wandered into our auditorium. And I was given a shotgun and was told that shooting the fox would help keep us safe. I was scared for a number of reasons. As I searched backstage for the fox, I heard screaming and shouting inside the theater and a handful of people encouraged me, we're counting on you to shoot the fox and keep us safe. I had never killed an animal before, but I love the Salvation Army. and I ran towards the fox. And I entered into this massive theater into chaos, and some were screaming, and many were running, and a few were laughing. It was loud. I checked to see if the shotgun was loaded, and I tightened my grip. It was time for me to kill this fox. And the fox was quicker and smaller than I had imagined. Its fur was black and red and orange. Its tail was strangely large and full. I laughed nervously at how obscene it was to see such a wild animal in such a refined setting. I saw a man in a Salvation Army uniform seem to wrestle with this fox. This was it. I looked at the fox and the man who were wrestling and raised my shotgun. I began to weep. This was not ideal. The theater grew quiet and I calmed my breath, and I waited for the right instant, and I heard the man begin to laugh. The theater was near empty, and it was me, the fox, the man, and his laughter. And I put down the gun, and I heard an audible voice. This fox is the Holy Spirit. It is strange, and it is wild. You could fear but you should play. And I woke up. For me, it's hard to follow the Holy Spirit because it's, very, it's not safe and it's not normal. And it's easy to fear and it's easy to ignore and it's easy to try to silence because I'm afraid to let go of the control I have in my life. And yet God calls us to follow a Holy Spirit that is strange and is wild. And I believe he's saying to us this weekend, I think that he's saying to our denomination, the Salvation Army, I believe he's saying this to the church, you could fear, but you should play. May we be people who follow after the Holy Spirit, even when it doesn't make sense. God bless you.
Three Generations strives to spur you on to active participation in the life, ministry, and work of the Salvation Army. It stands as an opportunity, a moment in time, for you to respond to the call of God. Regeneration wants to encourage you to pursue a life of biblical Christianity through committed discipleship and the passionate communication of the gospel. Regeneration wants to remind you that God has raised you up to be a generation of believers who are grounded in the Word. Regeneration was created to help you share your gifts, commit to a personal prayer life, participate in church leadership, and seek a deeper personal relationship with Jesus. Regeneration is a means for you to grow as an individual while you explore ideas, values, and faith within a supportive community of your peers. Regeneration wants to challenge you to form and actively participate in Christian community, specifically through seeking out mentors to help advise you in your Christian walk. Regeneration wants to renew a sense of mission in your life and wants you to know that the Salvation Army is an idea and it belongs to anyone who can make it real. Make some noise if you love the Lord in here. Come on, let's stand to our feet and worship the Lord. Are you ready to give God praise? He is holy. How many are free in this building? Come on, if I have some free worshipers, come on, open up your mouth and shout.
get over your life. Know that you're free. You're no longer bound by your past. You're no longer bound by your shame. You're no longer bound by what people may think of you. You're not bound by what your mother, your father, your brother did to you. So the next time we sing this, I need you to shout it out as loud as you can, all right? All right? All right? Come on, let's sing it again. Come on, clap those hands. Say no more shackles, no more chains. Say. Y'all sound like y'all starting to believe it now. Come on.
some noise in this place. If you know that he is awesome, if you know that he is Alpha and Omega, open up your mouth wherever you are and begin to give God an awesome praise. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower where the righteous can run in and find safety. If you believe that, open up your mouth. Thank you, Father, for your awesome love. For there is no one like you. We've searched high and low yet, and still we have not found anyone like you. So God, we submit ourselves to you tonight. We submit our ways and our plans to you. So wherever you are, just extend your hands to the Lord. And what that symbolizes as we lift our hands is that we're surrendering our will to him. We're surrendering our all to him. We thank you, Father. You have won the victory. You've never lost a battle. You've never lost a case. And for that, God, we will worship you with our lips, with the lifting of our hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you have won the victory, say now, you have won, death could not hold you, that sounds so good, come on, say you are the Lord, you are seated, seated in majesty. Lord, you are, you are the reason. Woo. Come on, say it again. Everybody say it now, hallelujah. Lord, you have won, won the victory.
Over suicidal thought, say hallelujah. You have won the victory. You have won the victory over sadness. Come on, say hallelujah. You have won the victory over the spirit of lack here. Say hallelujah. You've won it all for me. Cause death could not hold you down. Death could not hold you down.
good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. Who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. Yes, Lord. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Why? You're a good, good father. Say. It's who you are. Yeah. with you it doesn't 
what you're going through now doesn't even equate to what God is about to bring you into. How many believe that? What's... I can tell you from a personal experience that you are looking at a byproduct of his grace. I've done things that I'm not proud of, but God yet and still chose to use me. And I know that if he can do it for me, I know that he can do it for you. How many believe that he can do it for you? And as I take my seat, I want you to keep in mind that this weekend is about regeneration and revival. How many are ready for the revival fire to fall? My prayer for this weekend is that as you leave these doors, that you leave changed, that you leave renewed, that you leave restored, that you leave with a different perspective, that you leave with a new level of faith, that you leave with a new level of anointing, that you leave with a new level of understanding of the word for yourself. I decree and declare that over your life. No longer will you be held down by your past. No longer shall you be timid or afraid because the Lord has not given you a spirit of fear, but one of power and one of love and one of a sound mind. So Father God, as we are about to receive the word from Pastor Mike God, we ask that you open up our hearts, that you open up our minds to receive what you have given your servant. God, you have your way with us. You have your way with us, Father. God, show us, reveal to us what you want us to take home and to grasp on tonight. God, we love you. God, we honor you. And God, we praise you. In the matchless name of Jesus, let every heart say amen. Amen Amen and amen. God bless you. Good evening, beloved. There is nothing like worshiping Jesus, yes? Especially with these people who are so drenched in love for Jesus. Oil just coming out around the room. What a joy. I wanted to keep going, and I know that we get to throughout the weekend. My name is Katie, and I just have a brief announcement, and I've been charged to pray, which I'm passionate about and I'm excited for. Uh, I am here with a ministry called Connect Up that does personal prayer ministry appointments for people. And this is a really special opportunity for you to have some time where people are praying over you and with you this weekend. But it's not something that automatically happens. It's something that you sign up for. You choose a time. Uh, We think that they'll probably all fill tonight. We're hoping to get them all scheduled tonight. So I want to encourage you, we'll do it together in just a minute, to choose a time and come in to receive prayer. I know that in my own journey, we all have our own journeys, don't we? We all have our own stories. And in mine, I suffered a tragedy a few years ago. Uh, My daughter, my husband and I have a little girl who passed away from a genetic disease. And in the midst of that grief and in the midst of that sorrow and that brokenheartedness, I just don't know what would have happened to me if prayer were not real if the presence of God were not real, and if Jesus was not able to do for my heart what nobody else could do for my heart. There are pieces of our story and our history that we need touched by God. But we can't find anything that can actually touch it. Do you know what I'm saying? And there's something about the hand of Jesus that can get right in like a heart surgeon, and touch the place that we need and bring healing. And I believe that this weekend that some of you are here because God is going to perform healing in your heart. That some of you know about him, but you actually feel distant from him. There are people here that you've been struggling with your identity, who you are, loving yourself for long enough. And this weekend, God is going to settle it. There's people in the room who are wrestling with addictions of various kinds. There are people here who have been betrayed, and ever since, you've not been able to trust. People around you are really forged friendships with people around you. And I don't know what it is for you, but I believe that in the presence of God, maybe in a connect-up appointment, maybe in the middle of worship or wherever it is, God wants to heal 
your heart. Because when revival is poured out, friends, we don't want to have cracks in our vessels. When God pours out his spirit, we want it to be able to contain the water so that it, our cup overflows. And then what God pours out is able to also touch others. Does that make sense? I think that um, healing prayer is like groundwork for revival. It's preparing the vessels to be able to contain and receive what God is going to pour out. So I really want to encourage you to come in. If you're doing well and you have nothing specific, that's fine. We'll just pray for more for you, that you would encounter the presence of God and you'd become even more hungry for what he has. So that's the link. Um, I'm giving you permission to pull out your phone now if you want to do that. You can take a picture of it. Uh, you can actually start at the BIT. I'm giving you the shortcut. <laughs> And go through, and you'll see a list of times, but I want to encourage you uh, to get on there and choose a time. Don't let the weekend pass without coming in to receive some prayer. Yes? <laughs> are you going to come? <laughs> all right. All of the prayer appointments are going to take place downstairs in this building, so they're very easy to find. Same area where you registered. When you sign up, it has a room a name and that's the room that you come to just go right down the steps and our team will be there to meet you all right now uh, I get to pray for us together tonight and I was thinking about this how it's like we're matches it's like each of us are matches and what does revival really mean like to me it means that real people like you and I get caught on fire right like it's not a building or a state, like it's, it's people. It's when people are burning. That's when the fire of God is active and moving. And so I wanted to pray that he would touch us tonight. So I'm going to invite you to stand as we pray for revival. Kicking off tonight. <laughs> All right. All right. And I just want to invite you to position yourself to receive from the Holy Spirit. That may mean opening up your hands to him, opening up your heart to him. And just focus on his presence. And I believe that as we pray, that God is even in this moment going to begin touching you with his presence and with his fire. And some of you are going to feel peace come over you. Some of you will feel a warmth in your heart, a sense of love, a sense of rekindling. And just even more than anything I pray, which I will release my heart in just a moment, it's more important to me that we just wait on him for a moment. God, there's so many times where people were just waiting and something sovereign began. And it's what we're hungry for tonight. That wind would blow in, that fire would manifest, that joy would come upon us. And just like a bunch of wicks or matches, God, standing on the earth together in Wisconsin, <laughs> we ask that you would come upon us, Lord, that you would send your fire. And even now, Holy Spirit, I invite you to move in power all throughout the room. Here we are, God, a company of people that's hungry for you. Holy Spirit, we want to see you move in our day. 
God, that the pictures of our meetings would be in the archives of the Salvation Army for centuries because of what you do with this time. God, would you remember the spirit that you put on those who birthed the Salvation Army? So fiery, so bold. Would you put that on us, God? We give you permission to move, even like in the dream, God, wild. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Just begin to say, I welcome you, Holy Spirit. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. And we pray for revival in the Salvation Army. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi everybody, my name is Michael. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. I struggle with addiction to drugs, alcohol, sex, food, lying and exaggerating. <laughs> Laugh it up, chuckles. I lay, I lay bare my soul, my pain, you're like, ah, ha, ha. Uh, well done for you, it's good to be here. I'm from Canada, we're slow. Uh, I, apparently, when I come down here, everybody's like, uh, everybody's asking me about all the political stuff. I don't know anything about it. I know the government will be on his shoulders. He is the ruler of all of God's creation. I don't know what's going on. You know, Canada has a government. America has a government. Everybody has a government. But they're all going to be gone. So I could waste all my time and energy thinking about it. Or I could just focus on the government that is him. And we could be representatives of the kingdom. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures. I'd just like to read it to you. I'm a pastor of a church. We're a cross-eyed little crowd. Nobody gets paid any money to be with us. We have no staff. Uh, everybody volunteers. And uh, we're called Cross Culture. And uh, one of our favorite scriptures is this one here. It speaks about Jesus in the book of Revelation when they're opening up the scrolls and there's nobody to open the scroll. And they're looking around and, the, you know, John is weeping and weeping because there's these, these messages from God and nobody can open the messages from God. And finally, they sing a new song and they point to the Lamb who is Jesus, and they say, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased for God people from every tribe and language and tongue and nation. And you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign over all the earth. In the kingdom of God is every tribe, every tongue, every language, every nation, every single people group. So if you don't like a certain race, don't worry about it because you won't be there. There's no racism, only e-racism. And he brings us out of the, the, the breaking down of what man does and binds us together by the blood of Jesus Christ to be one people, celebrating the diversity brought together for one. Uh, as we gather today, I, I thought that it's good to look at the scripture. I don't know much. I know that the word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. And that the word of God can speak into our hearts today. And that Jesus is amongst us. And he is the one who searches hearts and minds. So even as we're here, your heart and your mind are being searched. So <laughs> that's kind of scary. You know, I, I was sitting with someone one time in uh, Bangladesh, and she was sitting across from me, and she was saying to me, you know, there was this guy, and he was preaching, and he was talking about stuff that God was saying to him, and I knew that he was a liar. She said, I knew that he was a liar. The spirit laid, and I was like, oh my gosh, she knows I'm a liar. 
And so she kept talking, but I was clouded and I was becoming all emotional. My limbic system was all activated. And I was like, oh my gosh, she knows that me, I'm a liar. And she was saying, and I was getting nervous and I was getting anxious until I heard the Lord say to me, shh, I know you're a liar, said the Lord. And I still love you. I said, Lord, make me different. He says, I'll make you different. You're going to speak truth. That's going to be my truth. Friends, I believe that the truth of the word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword and is here amongst us. I was born in Montreal. My father was the heavyweight champion in Canada. He boxed in the Olympics. Before the Olympics, 22 fights, 22 wins, 21 knockouts. My dad's tougher than your dad. Rarely lost that argument. But my dad was also a violent alcoholic, and when he was mad at me, I rarely won those arguments as well with my father. My father was a violent alcoholic, so was my grandfather and my great-grandfather and my great-great-grandfather and my great-great-great-grandfather were all violent alcoholics. On my father's side, we tracked back our family 350 years, violent alcoholic men. My son Jacob is the first Collins in 350 years to never see his father drunk because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, it's kind of intimidating to be here. I was here 10 years ago, and uh, that was a great time. We were in Missouri. Yeah, St. Louis, Missouri. That's quite a place. Uh, yes. God bless America. Really, it, it, God bless America. So, like, before I started to be in the United States, I guess about... 15 years ago when I started to travel, I had all the opinions that a lot of people have outside of America. Oh, they think they're the world's policemen. Oh, they think this, blah, blah, blah. And then I came to America and spent time here and I've come to this opinion. Freaking Americans rock. Yeah, you're a pretty good crowd of people. You beat yourself up a lot, but you're not that bad. Why else does everybody want to come here? Everybody wants to come here for a reason because you're not that bad. Even the stuff that you do, you think you're doing the right thing whether you are or not. That's good. God bless America. And I say that, I say it at Canada. People don't get to trash America. You're a pretty good crowd of people. You're here, you care, you're a loving group of people. Well done. You're not perfect. Have you ever heard this scripture before? He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. Have you ever heard that? That's not the end of it. There's an end to that scripture. But people always stop it there. It goes like this. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. Anyone? Bueller? Until the day of Christ Jesus, which means until he comes back, you are a work in progress. So am I. You have not arrived. If you're a lieutenant colonel or you're a major or you're a captain, good for you. You are also a work in progress. And God is not finished with you yet either. And so there's no place. And if you're the core sergeant major or the youth leader, God bless you. You are not better than anybody else. You are also a work in progress. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under God's mighty hand, and he will lift you up. And when he does, humble yourself under God's mighty hand, and he will lift you up. And when he does, humble yourself under God's mighty hand. If we could be a humble people, then we could attract a lot more fellers and women to the church of Jesus Christ. It's kind of pride is a bit of a repellent. You know what I'm saying? We got all the answers, you don't. That rarely works. That's right, isn't it, B. Bailey? Look at you in the front row. <laughs> My mother doesn't even know I'm out of the yard. <laughs> My mother passed away. True, I'm a massive orphan. My mother and my father are dead. My father died, my brother died of a drug overdose. He was my best friend. Drugs kill. Started smoking pot when I was eight. If you're struggling with drugs and it's secret, let the secret out. Don't struggle anymore. I'm a mental health first aid instructor in Canada. If you, if you struggle with anxiety or depression or bipolar, or you're having some delusions, a little bit of schizophrenia, you've had some sky, uh, psychosis, whatever it is, I'll tell you, healing comes through starting to talk about it. We have, to, we have to take mental health and, and remove the stigma of it because some days people with a maxi maximum diagnosis could be doing really well. I have a friend who has a diagnosis of schizophrenia. He's on medication. He's in community. He's about to be a nurse. He's doing really well. We have friends who have no mental health diagnosis can be doing really poorly. Wherever you are in your mental health state today, 
You're probably not going to be the same for the next two years. It moves. We need to speak and talk and become free as a people to speak about the things that trouble us so that Jesus can put healing wherever it is. Confess your sins to each other, pray for each other, and you will be healed. Hide it up all inside you to get all poison and nasty and skunky and the funk will be smellable. Let it out and let the Lord heal you. Well, I want to read from Luke chapter 4. Uh, it's my favorite. I have many favorite scriptures. This is one of them. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everybody praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue. And as was his custom, he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Almighty God, we thank you for your word, which is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. We believe that your word penetrates and divides soul, spirit, joint, marrow, and that your word judges the thoughts, actions, and even the intentions of our heart. We declare we want that. We want the intentions of our heart to be laid bare, that you might cleanse us and heal us where we need it. We pray these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There was a man in Canada in the hospital, in a hospital that I was kind of going in and out of because pastors go to hospitals, yeah? And so there was this man there, and he was um, not doing well. He had died. And they revived him, and he kind of came back to life. And his family had a vigil around him, and the, the diagnosis looked good. The prognosis looked good. It's not a diagnosis. I'm not a doctor. So the prognosis was that he's probably going to get better. But he wasn't getting better. He kept getting more and more sick. And then the, the doctors would come in and perform all the doctoral type of things that they do. And he would start to look like he was going to get better. But then they would leave and he wouldn't get better. And his family kept this vigil around him. And he kept getting more and more sick. And, then, and, and so like, I, I was praying as well. So the doctor... Would go in, and when the doctors were there, he would do better. When the doctors would leave, he would do really poorly. But this vigil of his family around him, and they came in, and they found out that the family was holding his nose closed and cutting off his blood circulation here. They didn't want him back because he was a bad man. They didn't want revival from him. They wanted him dead. Declaring your hearing, there's a few churches that Jesus says, if you don't smarten up, I will come and unplug your lamp. We're all like, give me revival, give me revival. And so he's not going to give revival to a funky church that's offside and disobedient and knows that it is. Yeah, we used to have a flourishing congregation telling stories about how things were in the past, how everything was great. So many people were here. The ladies' tea was filled all the time. The songsters were a joyous noise. The band could blow the horns like nobody else. We served the poor every third Sunday. Oh, we were a funky place. Yeah, and so then we started to kind of fail and things got smaller and smaller. We cried out for revival. Oh, we cried out for revival. And sometimes the prophets would come in the middle of the church and say, the Lord wants us to turn our heart to the poor. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon us because he has anointed us to preach good news to the poor. First to the poor. Have you ever heard the story? It's from uh, Galatians chapter 2. The apostle Paul goes up to Jerusalem after about 14 or 17 years. I'm not quite sure how long it is. Read it for yourself, you'll like it. He goes up to Jerusalem to meet the apostles, who he had only seen for a couple weeks after getting saved. What was taught to the apostle Paul was predominantly taught because of what he knew from the Old Testament, because he was a student of Gamaliel, he was wise. Well, I don't know about wise, he knew the scriptures, and that he was taught by the Holy Spirit. And so he went up there, and they divided the world. Imagine this meeting. There's a meeting that has... James, John, and Peter. Those reported to be the pillars of the church. And the Apostle Paul and Barnabas. That's a pretty heavy hitter meeting, isn't it? So they get together and they divide the world. Kind of gutsy. And they recognize that the Apostle Paul has the anointing upon him to be an apostle to the Gentiles and that Peter to the Jewish people. And so they divide the world. Peter puts out his right hand, extends the right hand to fellowship, and says, now we'll divide the world. 
I'll be the apostle to the Jews, you be the apostle to the Gentiles. And they're like, all right. And then Peter looks at Paul and says, only one thing, never forget the poor. And Paul says, the one thing that I was eager to do. If you are in love with Jesus, you love the poor. If you don't love the poor, I don't think you love Jesus. If you don't love the poor, I don't think you know Jesus. That's me saying that. If anything is said here today that sounds stupid, offensive, or really cross-eyed, I thought of it all by myself. It's a Michael Collins original. If anything is spoken here today that in your heart is kind of like, mm, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. The church has to be about the ministry to the poor. First. So if we're living a lifestyle that's like, I want to live for me and my family and it looks good and us and all the things that we like and it's got a good youth group for my kids. It's got a Bible study for my kids. It's got all the stuff that I like and we like to sing and we like to do that. But you've ignored the poor? Stop crying out for revival of that. First ask that our hearts might be changed, that we might have a heart for the poor, that we would have a heart for the disadvantaged, and then there would come revival. When my father went to prison, I was one and a half years old. They murdered my uncle, and they came to murder my father the same day at our home. And my father took off and went to the other side of the country. I lived in Montreal, which is kind of above New York, and he moved to Vancouver, which is kind of above Seattle, right across the country. And he left us, and we were poor. And in the winter, winters are kind of like this in Montreal. We had our heat turned off and our electric turned off. I come from a really poor family. We didn't have food. French fries was dinner a lot of times. Man, they were delicious. French fries and potato chips in a sandwich. Everybody ever know? Yeah, they're flipping delicious. Let's put some French fries in there and shake them in the paper bag and all the grease comes out and you throw the salt in. And that was dinner. I thought that was dinner. We were poor and everything was cut off and we, um, my mom, we had gas still. So my mom was telling us about when she was in the war in England and she got bombed. They used to get bombed regularly so all the lights and the electricity were out and so she opened up the gas stove and we were kind of sitting and it was on and there was a bit of warmth out of it and some light and she was saying, oh, we used to hide in the dark when the bombs were coming. And so we're like, oh, this is interesting. And then she says, there's not going to be a Christmas. It was Christmas time. She says, it really doesn't come from Santa Claus. It comes from... Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm not sure if there's anyone here who's a Santa. All right. I see some crying faces back there. You lied to me. <laughs> she said, it doesn't come from Santa Claus. It comes from your friends and family. I'm going to tell you what. While she was talking, a knock came at our door. And we opened up the door. Two people wearing blue costumes with little red shields on their hat. And so we're like, and we were culturally Catholic. We didn't have anything to do with the Salvation Army. They were just up the road. And we opened the door and they're like, hey, we heard that you're having some trouble this Christmas. And my mom's like, yeah. And they brought us in boxes of food and presents and all kinds of stuff. And I was like, oh. So I went to school the next day and I said, Santa Claus doesn't come from a big dude in a red suit. It comes from a guy and a girl in blue suits. And everybody was like, no, it does not. That's stupid. And someone else in the class said, yes, it does, because they came to my house as well. And then my family, who were culturally Catholic, we started to go to the core. My mom had been a girl guide leader in England. And so we started to go to the core, and we loved them. And so I grew up having an understanding of who Jesus was, because the army was doing what the army is raised up to, loving and serving the poor. That's what we're about. Maybe we need to sell some of our brass instruments to raise funds to do it if we're broke. What? did not say that. Boo. Yes, I did. I anticipate to never be invited back everywhere I ever go. <laughs> everywhere I go, I'm like, they will never invite me back, so I'm having a good swing at it while I'm here. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You see, revival doesn't always come. Sometimes people in churches die. Think about the seven churches in Revelation. Which one of those are still alive? They had warnings, and they didn't adhere to them. They had warnings about how to live and how to operate, but they still wanted to do what they wanted to do, and those churches are dead. Jesus actually says it to them himself. He says, if you don't repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. I will come and unplug the light myself, says Jesus. I'm not going to send revival to you if you're still having sexual immorality, not the kind that practices it, check it out. 
It's, he's not after them in those, in those letters just because of what they were doing. It was that they said that the teaching was okay. Right? So, the, like, the sin, we're going to struggle. In this flesh, it's, it's a battle. We know that. You are going to struggle. I am going to struggle. We are going to struggle. God doesn't want us to be active in our sin. He wants us to stop sinning. And he wants to give us the power to do that. But he knows that we're going to struggle with that. But in the churches where it's like, oh yeah, but this is okay, and that's okay, and a little bit of this and a little bit of that, he's like, I will unplug you. You won't even be my church anymore. You can't be my bride and a whore at the same time. He purchased us when we were a prostitute, when I was a prostitute, when I was a filthy, dirty, nasty man, with his blood, he came and purchased me. Yeah, and Mary Magdalene. This is not against prostitution. But once we became the bride, now I'm his bride. Now I'm not allowed to go out and sell it somewhere else. Now I belong to him. And if the church is selling it to the world, that is not the church. And we will be unplugged and we will not be revived. We will die. But if we turn to the Lord Jesus Christ for healing, confess that we are naked and wretched and poor and blind, then he will clothe us like a beautiful bride and give us salve for our eyes. Cover our shameful nakedness and buy from him gold refined in the fire and then there'll be a revival. And then there will be a revival that could never be stopped. We won't talk about, well, I remember 150 years ago in the Salvation Army. Those times will not be talked about as much as they are today because we don't want to keep looking backwards. I tell you, tra traditionalism is the dead faith of living men. Tradition is the, is the, is the living faith of living men and women. We need a tradition that said we looked after the poor and now we're going to go forward and continue to do that. If we're just looking backwards to what used to happen, that only has to be to inspire us to move forward today. Jesus warns the churches. He's not always, the, Jesus is not always defined as this comfortable little Jesus that we hear about. I got led to Christ by a Jehovah's Witness. Right? He did speak to the prophet through the mouth of a jackass so he could pretty much do whatever he wants, the Lord, Yeah. The donkey's getting wallaballed. Finally, the donkey turns around and says, yo, why are you whooping me? You're the one that's being disobedient. So I was led to Christ by a Jehovah's Witness because he put a Bible in my hand and I read it. Is this thing way too loud? Am I way too loud? No, because I feel like I'm going to blow up. I'm not angry at all. <laughs> Sometimes people are like, who's the angry guy? I'm not angry at all. I am flipping filled with joy. I couldn't be any happier if I tried. If I was any trier, you'd see me dancing like this. I'm not even a little bit angry. I am so happy. It's like, oh, that was a great time. We went to Regen, and this guy from Canada came out. Ah, bah, bah, bah. You're a bunch of whores. <laughs> Can't wait to go back to the next session. It's going to be you. God bless you. They won't come. They'll be, is that guy, guy again? Ho, 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 ho. He, not only does he say, if you don't repent, I'll come to you and unplug your lamp. He says, consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at the first. Love the poor. Repent, otherwise I will come to you and fight against you with the sword of my mouth. If we don't repent and start to do the things that Jesus wants to do, he'll be, he'll be against us with the sword of his mouth and come up and say, the spirit of the sovereign Lord was upon you and you were anointed for the poor. For the poor. Start there. Start there. So what if there's not enough money? Sell our stuff. There is enough money. The Lord is never broke. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the kettles in a thousand malls. The Lord is not broke. <laughs> that joke never works with the Baptists. I'll tell you. It works in the Salvation Army all the time. Funny as heck. Here's one. Here's a beauty. Cuddly, cuddly, coochie, coochie Jesus. Unless they repent, unless they repent of her ways, I will strike her children dead. Jesus, wake up, strengthen that which remains and is about to die. Wake up. Wake up, Salvation Army. Wake up, Central Tor Tor Territory. And like I'm listening, do we want the revival for you or your core or the army? Like, what is it? It's going to start with you. It's got to start with you. 
And then we got to get together in the cores and say, what are we going to do? And what is God saying to us? Let this, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Whoever has ears, and what I like about that is that the world should hear that the one who loves us, we can't act like we're better than anyone else, because the world would then hear that the Spirit says to the churches, not everything you do is all right, you should clean up your own mess before you tell the rest of the world how to live. Stop telling everybody who doesn't go to your core, who's just in the world, how to live their lives and what their morals should look like. How about clean up your own house, and then you can speak to other people about theirs. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. I had a time, you know, when I became a pastor and uh, I started to live a lie. I started to smoke weed again. And I was just a little shameful man. I was hiding everything all the time. And I, I like the idea that like chains are gone. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And when our hearts condemn us, he is greater than our hearts. And I started to live a shameful life. And I wasn't smoking it all the time like I used to, but like I'd get high and then I wouldn't tell anybody and it was all shameful and I didn't know what to do. And then I told my friend Rob Noland. I told my friend Jeff. I was like, I'm smoking pot. They're like, what? Yes, I am. And I told them that and confessed and we started to pray for each other. Woo-hoo! Whoa! All that kind of like sick, shame, hiding, darkness was gone. I was, it says... Confess your sins to each other, pray for each other, and you'll be healed. Like my soul felt better. My very soul, my very being. And then I was like, man, I don't have to live that lie anymore. Be earnest, therefore, and repent. Strengthen that which remains. Sometimes people have a DNR over them. Do you know what that means? <laughs> Do not resuscitate. And on some places, Jesus comes and goes. DNR. Do not resuscitate. They're like, revive us, save us. Not saving that. If you change and repent, I'll come to you and I'll save you. And you will live again. And you will have a life. And so I wonder that as God's people, what is it that the Holy Spirit is saying to you? Can I say this to you? You know, like, um, if there is anything that's offside in your life, like, let me see. Yep, there's a heck of a lot of offsides in here. How do I know? Because there's people here in the church. I was a pastor. I'm a pastor for 23 years. I know the church has all kinds of dark stuff in it. Everybody's trying to hide it. Just confess. Pray for each other and you'll be healed. Stop living in fear of the Lord, the one who loves you, the one who says, Come. Are you familiar with Hosea and Gomer? Right? One of the coolest stories in the whole wide world. Jesus says to the prophet Hosea, go marry the prostitute. So he's like, all right. <laughs> Goes and marries her in a small village, not like in a place like uh, New York City where there's a lady who works over here and nobody knows. In the type of town where the pastor married the prostitute. Like the prophet's like, go marry her. So he's like, Okay, so he goes and does it and brings her home and they have children. And then she goes out and starts to go back again. And sells herself again. And has someone who's being the pimp again. So now, not only did the prophet or the pastor marry the local prostitute in town, then she went back out and did it and everybody's like, there's the pastor's wife. Could you imagine if a Salvation Army officer married a woman who had formerly been in prostitution and then she went back out all in the same small town? Would not the gums be flapping? Do you know that gossip and sexual immorality are equal in God's eyes? Oh, that's right. Gossip and sexual immorality. You know which sins are the worst? The ones that I don't do. You know which sins God has the most grace on? The ones that I do. That's not true. They're all guilty in the least, guilty in the most. Broke one law, you've broken them all. So after she goes back to her lifestyle, he says, now go buy her again. Go purchase her back. So now that he made her his wife, came home, they had children together. She went back out. Now God says, go do it again. So not only does he have to do it, but it's in front of everybody. 
Everybody sees it and knows it and knows what's going on. So he goes back and he buys her again. It tells exactly how much she cost. He buys her back. He brings her home. He loves her. And then God says, now you know what it's like to be me. Now you know what my bride acts like sometimes. At the time was Israel, now grafted in the church. Can we stop being like that and really have an intimate relationship with our Father? Have a real intimate, intimate relationship with Jesus through the Holy Spirit? Then revival will come. Then revival will come. But I encourage you, over tonight and tomorrow, I, I, I'm not going to do one of those things where it's like, come forward now and do some stuff. If you want to go forward, the, the prayer call was out. The prayers are open all the time, yeah? Lady with the hat? <laughs> HTTP. <laughs> B-I-T. I remember the first three letters. I was like, you better stop right there. Didn't know where you're going, sorry. Somebody shouldn't be brought back to life. If they're unrepentant, wicked, vile people who do horrible things to young children, probably better off if they went into the grave. I'm going to read you something that just happened to pop up in my Facebook post from the founder of the Salvation Army, and it popped up today. It's from the founder of the Salvation Army. We all know that great fear about movements and the life going out of them. A man is only of use while the life is in him. And an organization, no matter how capable may be its leaders, no matter how clever may be its theology, if the life has gone out of it, it is no use to God or man. When a man is dead, we bury him. And when the spirit is out of an organization, it is dead too. When the spirit, the life of the Salvation Army, goes out of it, I pray that God may bury it dead. And if I am not allowed to come down again, and if I am allowed to come down again, I want to come to the funeral. I don't want this organization to stay above ground any longer than in the spirit of the master and doing his work and going about saving the souls of men. William Booth, British War Cry, October 19th, 1882. The founder of the Salvation Army, the one we speak so much about, says, if the spirit goes out and we no longer love the lost and love the poor, he would rather that we be buried. So why don't we just then say, we want the Holy Spirit to come back and refine our, refine our attitudes, refine our vision, refine who we are. What if it was to refine our structure? <laughs> Did somebody turn up the heat in here? It's got really hot. What if everything he had was nothing we planned for? I remember what happened 10 years ago. My friend Eric Himes to come back. It was an interesting thing 10 years ago. And one of the parts was that the officers came forward as well. That's what I remember the most about that day. It wasn't, wasn't all the people who brought all the young people going, I hope they get better. The officers came forward as well. Because everybody needs to draw near the Lord, make sure their heart is clear, and allow him and draw near him that he might ser search our hearts and minds and our souls. True? Then revival will come. Then we'll be filled with the Spirit. Then we'll be a powerful movement again, and then we'll be alive. Does anybody have any questions? No, really, everything was like sparkling clear, not a question in the whole place? No questions? Please. Which scripture verse what? What kind of scripture verse should you reflect on? I think that you should reflect on the letters that, to the seven churches. It's Revelation 2 and 3. Read that. Read the letters to the churches. Because in it, he's like, here's who I am. Here's who I am. Here's who you are. Here's what happens if you do the right thing. Here's what happens if you do the wrong thing. I would say the, the letters to the seven churches in Revelation, really clear, because it's a letter to the churches, right? And it's Jesus himself speaking. At the time when he's already gone home to be with the Father, been on the throne, and then speaks directly to the churches. Because in it, you'll find yourself and your church. The good, the bad, and the other. Good question, brother. Any other questions? Any meaning? Please. Please. <clears throat> 
God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And in recovery, we say the first thing to know is you can't change other people. Because it's a serenity robber. Like if I want you to be different and I'm trying to change you and you don't want to change, it robs the peace of me. So I would say this. How do you do it? You just work on you, take the plank out of your own eye, and pray for the other person that God will show them. And if they're, and if they're a bit of a poison, I would say, you know, let them hang around over there hang around over here we can't change other people but the holy spirit can that's a good question brother an earnest one also any other please Great question. So the question is, uh, confess your sins, pray for each, confess your sins to each other, pray for each other, and you'll be healed. And then it's like, what if we have beautiful, long friendships? We've never really done that kind of stuff. What do we do then? I would say break out that scripture and look at it and say, what do you think that means? <laughs> Let the Bible speak. <laughs> I would say open up that scripture and say, what do you think about that? And here's the weird thing, too. People get all kinds of weird and angry. Are you saying, I'm, no, I'm saying the Bible says. What does that say? Why, are you trying to tell me, no, I'm not, are you thinking I'm a sinner? No, yeah. Because <laughs> if it's a long, beautiful friendship, you know they're a sinner. I, I would say really, I, I, and I don't mean to be joking, Kathleen. I think you like, you open up the Bible and you say, here, I've been thinking about this. What do you think this might mean to each other? Because I'll tell you, the best people are your closest friends to actually confess to because it feels safe. The reason I first came out to Rob Nolan because I know what I say to him is safe. I thought he wasn't going to tell anybody and he didn't. And my friend Jeff, I thought he's not going to tell anybody and he didn't. But once the secret was out, the secret was out. I didn't care anymore. I didn't have this like, oh, nobody finds out. I was like, yeah, I was a filthy pot smoker. Not that smoking pot is filthy in itself, but I was because I was living a lie. I don't think you should. They don't call it dope because it makes you smart. They call it dope because it makes you stupid. <laughs> and if anybody wants any of the science on it, the research on marijuana, I've got like reams of research, medical research, and all the science on marijuana. Anybody wants to talk about, well, what about CBD? I don't know, but you ain't smoking CBD, so there's that. <laughs> any other questions? <laughs> any meaningful insights? Any positive or negative feedback? Is there anybody still awake? Please. That's a great question. Uh, so if the congregation is thriving under the leadership of a certain pastor and then the pastors move on, how do they continue to thrive? I would say those pastors who got you there, ask them. Say to them, like, here we are, what should we do? And put it in the brief to the next guy that's coming in. Put it in the brief that we like this stuff and we want to be like this and you see it and it's on fire and it's happening. And so I would say, ask that person, what can we do to keep this going? Because my guess is that that officer is thinking about the same stuff. And so then once that conversation comes out, it could move the officer from just having that conversation, perhaps with just the leadership team or other officers, to having it in a more broad aspect in the core. That should be, that's a great question. Because that does happen, doesn't it? Sometimes. Anything else? Now, so Philippians 3.16 says this. Paul writes to the church at Philippi and he says this. After going blah, blah, blah and saying a whole bunch of stuff, he says, all of us who are mature believe this stuff. If on some point you disagree, God's going to make that clear to you. In the meantime, live up to what you've already attained. So like, if you go to church 52 weeks of the year and go to Bible study 52 weeks of the year, and then like, that's a lot of stuff you got to do, eh? Love the poor, pray more, go to Bible study, go to prayer meeting, submit, work on the soup line, go over here. It's just like this big list of stuff that all of a sudden becomes a burden. I would say this to you, whatever you've heard from the Lord, just do that. Just start there. So what did you hear today? If we come up with 10 things that you guys heard today, I'll shut up. Otherwise, I'll do the whole thing again and go right into the little snacky time. Whoa. <laughs> I saw them lined up Reese's Pieces. I don't know. What'd you hear? Love the poor. Love the poor. 
Be honest. Pardon? Start with yourself. Be humble. Stop telling everybody else how to live. What's up with that? So true. Right? It's from the letter to the Corinthians where everybody's like, sexual immorality and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, clean up your own house. The church is not supposed to tell people who don't come to church how to live. We're supposed to clean up the church. But in the church, we're like, don't judge me. Don't. Yes, actually. And we're not judging you. The word has already been revealed. If it's against the word, it's already been judged. So I'm supposed to clean up my filthy self with the plank in my eye. Then we could talk a bit about the speck of yours. And at no point are we supposed to go tell people who don't go to church how to live. Who they can marry, what they can do, who they can kiss. That's for the Holy Spirit. Why don't we clean up the church? Do our own stuff. Then they'll become a revival. Good word, man in the green shirt. Thank you very much. <laughs> Five more. What else you got? Please. Dig deeper. Love it. Confess your sins. Let the past be the past. Forgetting what is behind and pressing forward to what we've been called in Christ Jesus. Be a bride. Be a bride. Thank you. I'm going to be a beautiful bride. When I put on that dress, I'll tell you what. When I was 17 years old, I lived in England. And there was this thing where you were supposed to, like, these 34 men had been competing to win $2,200, 1,000 pounds at the time, to see who could dress up the best like a woman. And when I showed up, there was the last final eight. They'd been doing it for weeks. My uncle put me in and I won. <laughs> I could be in the circus as the bearded lady. When I am the bride of Christ, I'm still confident in my masculinity. I'm not, I'm cyst. Cyst? I'm a man. But I look good in a dress and I can't wait to be a bride. That's what I'm saying. One more. Pardon? Be humble. Lord, we want humility. Show us where our pride is. We want revival. Show us what's in the way. Show us what's in the way. We don't want you to come and unplug our lamp. We don't want to have a beef with you. We want to be on your side. We want you, Holy Spirit. We want to love the poor. We want to love the Lord first. We want to love you first. And we want to love each other. And we want to love the poor. And we want the poor to be part of each other. We want the poor in our church. If they're smelly, we still want them. We still want them on our pews. If they come and they might have bugs or cooties, we still want them. And if we don't, show us what's wrong with us. Bring us the poor. Bring us the hungry. Make us who you want us to be. A church where the hurting and the loneliest people, where the first will be last and the last will be first. Where our first residency will be in the kingdom of God. Where our first vote will be a vote for Jesus Christ. The ruler of all of God's creation. Thank you for the beautiful people here, Lord. Thank you for their honest hearts. Thank you for the desire for revival. We ask that over this weekend you'll refine our hearts and bring revival. That it will start here and be a great fire that goes across the land. Send the fire. Send the fire to each soul. We pray for families that aren't here. For our siblings and our parents and our aunts and our uncles who are struggling in addiction or in mental health. Lord, you know the pains of our hearts. You search our hearts and minds and we want to give that to you too. Your yoke is easy and your burden is light. We cast all our cares upon you. Somebody shouldn't be revived, but that's not us, Lord. We should be revived because we love you and we're yours. <sighs> Keep us humble in your service, please, and use us for your glory. Pray these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people say. Praise the Lord. So if you have something that you need to do, if the spirits reveal that, pray that you would. If you need to pray, if you need to have a moment, Take that moment.
revivals in the room. Revivals in the room. Open up the portals of heaven. Lord, shower down revival. Whoa. Everything that's not like you, please burn it away. the same way that we can we won't leave same way we came we are changed by the blood that was shed for us We won't leave here. We want to be pure. Want to be clean in your sight. Want to be made pure in your sight. Have your way with us, Lord. Have your way with us. Have your way. Revival fire. <laughs> we don't want to leave your presence. We don't want to leave your presence. Because in your presence, there's freedom. In your presence, there is joy. In your presence there is peace for the weary. There is rest for the weary. There's deliverance for the broken. Everything we need is in your presence. You welcomed in this room. You welcomed in this room.
You're welcome in this room. You are welcome in this room. Lord, you are welcome in our hearts. You're welcome in our minds. Lord, you are welcome in our lives. I want to be tried by fire. Ooh. Pure. As a sacrifice, I want to burn for you, only for you, oh, clean my hands, Ooh. purify my heart, I want to a sacrifice I want to burn for you only for say clean my hands clean purify purify I want to burn I want to Only, only take my life, take my life. Yeah, as a sacrifice, I want to burn only clean. should begin now. I think you are waiting for something to happen. It's happening. 
So I'm the one to come to tell you, do the thing that God wants you to do right now. It's not, we don't have to wait for tomorrow. We don't have to wait for tomorrow night. Right now, right now, go to the altar. Go to the altar. Come to God right now, right now, right now, right now. Revival, 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 revival. You hear me? Do you hear God say that to you? Revival right now, now. You're so expectant. Some of you need to lay down in the floor. Some of you need to lay down before God. Put your body in a position to receive from God right now. Where are you? Who is it? Who's supposed to do it? Come do it. Come do it. Kneel your body down. Lay your body down. Come to the altar right now. Even if you're like, I don't feel like God's saying anything to me. Just go try. Let's put ourselves into a posture and a position to hear for God because God is already saying revival is for right now, in this moment. So please be obedient. Please be obedient to what God is asking you to do. Please be vulnerable. To be purified, we need to be vulnerable. Some of you need to confess your sins. Why aren't you doing it? Find a friend. There's people in the back here who would love to hear your sins and to pray for pure purity of heart. Some of you have some secrets. We don't have time. There's no time. I'm bored with this. There's not, there's not time. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't wait for tomorrow night for revival because revival needs to start now. Do you hear me? We don't have time because God wants to purify you so that we have more time. We need to be made holy and we can't be made holy until we get this stuff out of us. So tonight is the night, is the time to be made holy and made purified. Who is it? Come on. Who is it? Come on. God has been so faithful to me when I am vulnerable. When I step out in faith, God has been so faithful. So I'm asking you to be faithful to what God is asking you to do. Do this scary thing. I'm scared right now, but God has asked me to do this. So please be faithful and go and take care of your business. Go and try something new and scary. Some of you, I'm so serious, you have s mysterious and secret sins inside of you that are so deep, so deeply rooted, they need to be pulled out. Come on. If you don't know how to pray for that, there's people here who do know how to pull that out of you. I don't have time for it. I want to see revival. I want to see holy lives living in faithfulness to Jesus Christ. So let's do it. Let's go. I gotta pick up my kids too. Let's go. Let's be faithful to what God is asking us to do because if we are faithful, God gives us more. And he asks us to do more. And I believe God wants to do really powerful things through you. And I don't have time. The harvest is great. The workers are few. Come on, let's go. I'm calling you forward. Let's take care of it. God wants to enliven you and enrich you and encourage you and refresh you and pour new things out onto you. He wants to put, like, drop mist and dew that is so sweet into your life. Do you believe that? God wants to refresh you. 
Let's do that now. Let's be refreshed in this moment and not wait any longer. Do you need to be refreshed? Do you need to be made new? Do you need to be encouraged? Come to the Father. He wants to do that in you. Come on, let's be faithful. Even to that little teeny tiny whisper that God is speaking to you, just step out in faith. There's nothing to be scared of here. There's no judgment here. Let's just try it and be faithful. Let me encourage you that God wants more for you, more than you can even dream for yourself. God wants more. He has bigger ideas than you have for yourself. Let's start that today. Let's start that now. There's really big things. There's really beautiful things. There's really refreshing things that God has for your life. Let's start it today. Let's not be as scared. Let's not, even if you are like offended, if you have something that you feel, of, if I'm offending you right now, come to the altar. If, I'm a, if you are offended by something that Michael said, let's take care of that. Go talk to Michael. If you're offended, let's take care of it because God wants something more. Let's clear the air. God wants to not just like snow, little beautiful snowflakes. He wants to pour out, pour out onto you. He wants goodness for you. I believe that, I believe that for you. So please be faithful. Please step out, reach out, come on, come on. There's only goodness for you here. Only goodness. What is God whispering to you? What is he saying to you? He wants more. More for your life. Come receive it. Come receive it. Revival, revival, revival is now. It's now. Revival is now. Revival, revival, revival. It's right now in this moment, don't wait. Revival for you, revival for your court, revival for the army, it's right now. Let's accept it right now. Let's step into that right now. Don't be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of here. God is so good. He's so faithful. God wants new good things, new growth in your life, new faithfulness, new good things. Let's step into newness tonight. Right now. Some of you need to repent of how you treat the poor. Some of you need to repent of your opinions of the poor, your attitudes toward the poor. Let's do it now. Let's repent so that God can do new good things. Are you scared of that? Let's repent. Come forward. You got a problem with poor people? Let's deal with it at the altar. You got a problem with poor people in your community, in your family, in your core? Let's go. Let's go deal with that. Are you obsessed with um, politics and you need to make Jesus Christ your Lord? You need to put the government upon the shoulders of Jesus Christ where it belongs? Let's go do that right now. There's so many things. And we don't have time. We got more we got to do this weekend. Let's clear house right now so that the fire can really fall, right? Let's clear that sin out. Let's clear that discomfort out. Because there's so much goodness to come. So much goodness. So much sweetness of the Holy Spirit to come. So much friendship to come with the Holy Spirit. Let's not miss out because God wants to do something really good something so whole and pure. Let's do it. Let's deal with it right now. God, you are so faithful. Come, come, come to the altar. Do you have questions? Come. 
Find somebody to talk to. Let's deal with it. Let's put it all out. Like, let's just throw it all up before the Father who is so good to clean up our messes. So good to, to clean up our vomit. Let's go. Come on. I want revival. If you want revival, come. Come. Who are you confessing to? Come. Come, come revival. Come, Lord Jesus. Come. Come, Lord Jesus. God, you are so good. Revive us, O oh Lord. Make us new. Help us to turn over new leaves, grow new shoots, new buds within our life. Come, come and confess. God is so good. Revive our hearts, Lord. Revive our spirits, revive our minds, revive our bodies. Do such good work in us, God. You are so faithful. You are so worthy of praise. And Lord, we proclaim right now that we are ready. We are ready. We are ready for more. Please clear us. Purify us. Clean out those dark rooms of our heart. Those dark rooms in the houses of our life those corners and recesses of our minds, Lord. We pray that you would purify, that you would turn on the light to the darkness of our minds, of our sickness, of our unhealth. God, give us wellness and goodness in this moment, Lord. We want more, we want more. God, you are so good and so faithful and we love you. Come and confess. Come and be restored. Now is the time. Revival. Come. As a sacrifice, I want to make for you. Only for you. And we won't run away. We won't run away from your presence. We're waiting. We're waiting for you to encounter us. Oh, we're ready. Lord, we're ready. Hey, we want to burn for you. Only for you. Lord, clean my head. Purify my heart. I want to burn for you. Only for you. Take my life as a sacrifice. I want to Lord, I want to burn for you, only for you. I want to burn for you, only for you. I want to burn for you. Deliverance is in the room. Deliverance is in the room. Deliverance is in the room. Deliverance is in the room.
going to ask that I'm going to ask that the music just stop for a moment. Just ask the music to stop for a moment and just close your eyes and listen to the prayers of God's people.